Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about Michelle D and her placement at Miss Universe 2023. Uh, forgive me because of the look and everything. I'm currently at the airport flying back to Manila all the way from El Salvador and I've just been getting a lot of DMs because of um, you know the current situation at Miss Universe. Of course Michelle only advancing up to the top 10 uh, and then some posts that leaked online and whatnot. So there's just a lot of talks about what should have happened and how fair it is what actually went down at Miss Universe 2023. So during this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about that. First of all, I mean, before I even get into talking about the outcome and whether it is fair or not, I think that the, the first thing that we need to take into consideration is Michelle's performance. You know, one thing that I've been able to, I, I hope that I've been able to document a little bit all throughout my coverage of Miss Universe is just how prepared Michelle was for this role, how much, um, you know, thought and preparation went into her journey, that it was very intentional. There was a lot of uh, meaning, there were concepts, and you can tell that she was not just going for the average, you know, pageant journey or like pageant gowns or like outfits. And it was an intention pretty much behind everything. Similar to what Katrina did back in the day in 2018, I think that Michelle D so far up until this point I don't know if you guys agree, but uh, up until this point, Michelle is the one who came the closest to Catriona in terms of, you know, how much everything was planned and how hands-on she was with her preparation. Having said this, I'll share, with, I'll, I'll share with you guys basically some of my observations during the pageant, both during prelims as well as finals. Um, there was a time during the competition where I got a little bit worried for Michelle not because of her performance, not because of how she was presenting herself, but because that's when it hit me, that that's when I realized that Michelle was actually competing in a Latin country. Up until now, every single time that I got to see Michelle live in motion, uh, it was in the Philippines. So every single moment that, you know, Michelle will come out on stage, of course the representatives in the Philippines are, you know, like seen almost as celebrities. So of course they have, a lot of recognition and a lot of support from everyone. Uh, but it was a little disturbing for me when I realized that Michelle will come up on stage during prelims and the crowd wouldn't cheer as much for her as for other delegates. Even sometimes, I mean, of course, for the Latinas, but also for, let's say, Thailand, Nepal, all of these delegates were getting a lot of support uh, from the crowd. And I felt like maybe during those particular competitions, like prelims, maybe not cause Michelle was not getting as much support. That got me worried for a few moments, not gonna lie. Uh, but when the time came for finals, you know, um, I posted actually on my Instagram uh, a little video that I took of Michelle right after the opening number. Uh, she was happy, she was jumping, she was like, you know, cheering everyone up. So I felt like Michelle was really, really on the right mindset for, um, for the final competition, you know, that's when you really have to show up with most energy, really have to give it your best. And just seeing her doing that and feeling that way was very reassuring, at least for me, from a personal perspective. Uh, going into the swimsuit competition, again, I thought that Michelle was a standout in terms of performance, very unique. Uh, if one thing that we can say that we can highlight about Michelle is really the way that she prepared, um, she personalized every single aspect of it. You know, when you think about her walk, it is different to everyone else. It is different to, you know, the poses, um, the way that the motion, like the way that she moves on stage, the, the way that she connects with the camera, the facial expressions, everything is pretty much tailor-made for Michelle. So there was really no way for me to feel like, um, you know, there was something wrong with the swimsuit presentation. So up until that point, I was very, very, very confident. Of course, at this point, they already announced the top 20. So Michelle is pretty much just fighting for a top 10 in the competition. If you watch my vlog that I did for the final competition of Miss Universe, you will see that I was very, very confident that Michelle was going to be there. Of course, there's always a little bit of anxiety and nervousness, but I was in a very positive mindset. I had a good feeling about what was going to happen that night. So. And that's exactly what happened. Michelle uh, ended up going into the top 10. I'm going to say uh, this because I am Latino. I was born in, uh, you know, Cuba. So I know our culture and the way that we perceive Michelle. If you compare her to some of the other delegates that did advance into the top 10, 
already was not necessarily the prototype that Latinos will normally cheer for. Latinos like really, you know, the curvilicious type of girls. They really like, um, you know, like the the hour uh, the 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 hourglass. How do you call that? The the sunglass type of figure. You know, like the Pepsi Cola type of um, bottle shape uh, on a woman's body. And Michelle is a different type of beauty. Michelle is an Asian beauty. Uh, if you compare her, for example, with girls like Nicaragua who ended up winning, or even even Thailand. Thailand this year, Antonia, I feel like she blended so well with the Latinas, and that's maybe one of the reasons why she was able to secure so much support from the locals in El Salvador. But again, I guess all odds, Michelle managed to infiltrate the top 10. So at that point, I was over the moon because that's when we moved to evening out, and I knew, I, I mean, like, honest to God, I had no hints, no clues about what Michelle was going to wear. I knew people who were in the team who knew what Michelle was going to wear, but I, I never, at no point, I asked because, you know, part of the beauty of Miss Universe is, like, you have to allow yourself to be surprised by it. You have to allow them to, uh, I mean, as a fan, I, I want to enjoy the experience. If I know everything, it kind of takes away a little bit from my experience. So although I knew some people who were in the know, I didn't necessarily want to uh, spoil all of those things right away. So basically, uh, Michelle comes out and just a few days before we had a final interview, very short, it's a little chit chat. You can find it on my YouTube, uh, Instagram and my Facebook page, where basically I asked her three questions. How are you feeling? You know, what can we expect? And you know, all of those things. And basically, she gave me a very important hint. And if I'm being honest, I didn't pick it up right then and there. Uh, but she said that the, the gown was referring to, um, you know, heritage preservation, cultural preservation. And a lot of people made uh, the link right away with the famous tattoo artist in the Philippines. Um, and it turned out that it was exactly the reference that they were talking about. So Michelle comes out with a black gown. Uh, which kind of um, recreates or kind of tries to imitate the shape of this very iconic tattoo patterns from the Philippines who this particular tattoo artist is able to make. So I thought that the gown was more than just a beautiful pageant gown. Uh, there was a meaning to it. There was a concept. And of course, she also came out with the performance part of it. At this particular point in the competition, when Michelle D just delivered her evening gown presentation, I was confident we are moving on to the top five. I was sure there was no chance in hell that she was not going to the top five because she went above and beyond compared to everyone else. I mean, uh, when you look at all of the girls, they all looked absolutely incredible. But I do think that, you know, when it's a competition, you have to take care. You have to be mindful of those little details that at the end of the day make such a huge difference. Um, and if I'm being honest, how I felt, especially now that there has been, you know, a few days ever since all of this happened that I had some time to distance myself and like be a little bit more objective. I do think that, um, you know, Michelle was kind of robbed of that opportunity to advance to the top five. Why? I, I don't know why, you know, there are 100 and <laughs> 1000 theories out there, uh, on why Michelle did not advance to the top five, but Personally, I don't know. I think that it really comes down to the judges and what the judges wanted and who they wanted to advance to the top five. I know that there is this very um, hot topic right now about the post that was released on the Miss Universe El Salvador Instagram page where Michelle was supposed to be part of the top five. Look, I the way that I really see these things is for as long as it's not coming from Miss Universe themselves, I would normally just take it with a grain of salt. You never know. This is just the page for a national franchise at the end of the day. So you never know who the social media person is. You never know who the person in charge is. Uh, I think that people were kind of like jumping to conclusions really, really fast. Um, so, you know, that kind of generated a lot of bashing as well because people were saying, you know, Thailand shouldn't be there. And like they Thailand took, you know, Philippines spot. And then I also heard some rumors that it was actually Colombia that was put in there by mistake, but that then they wouldn't correct it because that would be like having, you know, 
a PIA moment 2.0 all over again between Colombia and the Philippines. So of course they wouldn't go ahead and like remove Colombia to put the Philippines. I'm not saying that this is what happens. I'm just saying that these are rumors that I heard based on, you know, the scenario of, of what happened. Uh, I personally feel like there, there might have been perhaps like already a vision of who the judges wanted to advance to the top, um, to the top five, especially for the end of the competition. But when you think about it, I think that the girls who were able to, to you know, penetrate that top five, they were okay speakers, okay? Uh, none of them, I think, that would have been able to match Michelle in terms of uh, her comm skills and how she would have addressed the answer, especially the type of questions that they were being, you know, that they were asking to the top three and the top five. I think that Michelle would have just, you know, like knocked it out of the park. Um, so maybe, maybe there was a little bit of strategy when it comes to that. Um, especially knowing that some of the girls who were advancing, they were going to be needing the help of a translator. This is not a problem. If you go to Miss Universe, you are entitled to have a translator. It's okay. But we always know that translators don't always do the greatest job at translating. So sometimes if you have one of these girls who needs to rely on a translator and one who is really, really, you know, uh, fluent, who can express herself freely without the need for someone else, then that might play uh, in their in their advantage. I, if you tell me that Michelle would have made it at least to the top five, I think that I would have been happier because uh, for me, what determined the top five was the performance on the evening gown. And I think that Michelle, hands down, had the best evening gown of the night. This is not a bias. This is not favoritism. This is not me trying to, you know, praise her because of uh, the country. Michelle, hands down, had the best gown, the best concept, the best delivery. Nobody came out. I mean, like it was literally revolutionary, never been done before on the stage of Miss Universe or any stage um, as a matter of fact. So I think that if at least you would have penetrated the top five, I would have been a lot happier because, you know, once you get into Q&A, it's really subjective. Depends on the judges, what they understand, what they don't understand. Um, so you can always take Q&A with a grain of salt, but the decision making for top five, it was definitely the evening gown. And that's something that you cannot really, there's not a lot of room for interpretation. It's basically just, based on the performance um i also saw i also saw a lot of people like jump into conclusions and like bashing and right away and i think that honestly based on what i saw again I'm, I'm not speaking like on behalf of anyone because i don't know and personally like that um but based on what i saw at the venue i think that and was pretty removed from the process from the decision making it was really on the judges uh, there is actually this video that is uh, going around on social media right now that it was basically Anne's reaction to Nicaragua being crowned where she seemed to be surprised and like a little bit upset because I think that Anne truly wanted Antonia. The thing is Antonia maybe didn't deliver her very best during finals therefore the crown rightfully went to Nicaragua. <laughs> Hands down, out of the top five, the girls who actually made the top five, Nicaragua was the best one. So I think that in that sense, the competition was fair. But um, where I don't know how to feel, uh, I don't know how to call it. Is it robbed? Is it mixed? Is Was there an error? Uh, was there a bias, you know, when it comes to the judges? I, what I don't understand is how come Michelle did not advance at least minimum to the top five. Again, if she, if she makes the top five and then she doesn't make the cut you know for the top three 
there's ways to like look at it, you know, maybe the judge is like better or different answer. Maybe, you know, there's always room for everything. But um, I thought that minimum a top five would have been um, good for her. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, again, if you go and you watch my video, you will realize that also, as I was telling you earlier, in terms of cheering uh, at the venue, there was just a lot, a lot, a lot of support, obviously for the Latinas. Nicaragua was definitely killing it with, you know, people just yelling her name and uh, just trying to, you know, just uh, support her as much as they possibly could. Of, of course, we are in Central America, and this is the very first time that Nicaragua would have won a crown. I mean, they actually just won a crown. So, of course, all the uh, locals showed up and showed out. It, 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 was, it was like a historic moment for them, basically. Uh, maybe this also had an impact on the judge's decision. I cannot tell you. I cannot uh, I give you my word for that because, again, I don't have any internal information. I'm basically just trying to make sense of whatever happened because I keep on being tagged and asked and questioned and how do you feel about this? And, of course, I feel the same way as everyone. Uh, I wish that things would have been different because I think that the level of performance, again, the level of performance that Michelle brought to Miss Universe um, can be compared to the level of performance and preparation that Castiona Gray brought to Miss Universe back in her day. So it is what it is at this point. Um, there will be no way to change the outcome of the pageant. Um, all I can say is that I'm really proud of Michelle. I'm really proud of what she accomplished. I'm really proud of how she handled herself. Um, and I think that, you know, regardless of the fact that she wasn't able to penetrate the top five, she will be received back in the Philippines like the queen that she is because the work just speaks for itself. So, you know, sometimes not everything is about the crown. Uh, sometimes it's also about winning the crowd and just winning people's heart. And I think that she was very, very extremely successful at doing that. So there you go. Those are my two cents, my two grains of salt uh, when it comes to Michelle D and uh, robbed allegations at Miss Universe 2023. Uh, let me know how you guys feel in the comment section. I think I'll make also a separate video to talk about some of the countries who didn't advance further because there's also a lot of upset from international fans. I've been asked about, you know, uh, South Africa, if she should have gone further or not, uh, India, lots of people. I mean, there's also a theory going around about Miss Canada who didn't even make the top 20, Dominican Republic didn't make the top 20. So maybe I'll make a separate video too talk about those things and give you a little bit of an insider's perspective as well from someone who was able to attend the pageant in person. So go ahead and express yourself down below. I'll be reading you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.